All right. Good morning. Welcome to morning prayer with the community of St. Andrews and in Glenwood. Um, let us take a minute and get settled or a few seconds and get settled and then we will begin. Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of all. To you be glory and praise forever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time, you made us in your image. And in these last days, you have spoken to us in your son, Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts, your spirit ever renew our lives, and your praises be ever on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. <clears throat> Bless the Lord, all you works of the, of the Lord. Sing his praises and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you heavens. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you angels of the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, all people on earth. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. O people of God, bless the <clears throat> Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you priests of the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you servants of the Lord. Sing, sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, all you of upright spirit. Bless the Lord, you that are holy and humble in heart. Bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into the, his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Meditation this morning uh, is based on three scriptures. The first comes from Psalm 119, verse 136. My eyes shed streams of tears because your law is not kept. Second scripture is from Isaiah. I will sing a song for my beloved, my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded rotten grapes. And now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield rotten grapes? And our last reading comes from the Gospel of Luke. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you are not willing. <clears throat> Centuries ago, Demonics the, the Cynic said this. Probably all laws are useless, for good men do not need laws at all, and bad men are made no better by them. 
we can see he has a point up to a point. But the writer of the psalm says, streams of tears flow from my eyes because your law is not obeyed. For this to be our response, we need to have compassion for those who do not take heed of God's law. For this to be our response, we need to be touched with the sorrow of God's heart and long to comfort God. For this to be our response, we need to believe that the law of God is good, is just, and given to care for and tend the people God loves. Does it move us to tears that the law of God is abandoned, ignored, or even scorned? Does it move us to action when we realize that most people have little concept of what the laws of God are? Is our, king, is our heart under kingdom rule? Or do we have divided loyalties as if we were citizens of two kingdoms, obeying whichever rule of conduct happens to suit us at the time? What more could I have done for you than I have done, says the Lord, for I have loved you. Our meditation this morning comes from the Northumbria community in the book Celtic Daily Prayer, book one. I invite woe, you to. Woe and lament. Woe and lament. You're muted, Susan. Because I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I kind of was drawn immediately to the uh, sentence that says, probably all laws are useless for good men do not need at all, mm -hmm. at all, and bad men are made no better by them. Mm -hmm. Um, that that <laughs> seems uh, so true, and I, you know, when I think of the law, I uh, I find the the emphasis on worshiping the law or or making that so central to be a difficult thing. Um, I, I, I struggle to reframe my thought of the law with capital T and capital L as uh, merely a map of, of God's will and God's plan for us and not a set of, of restrictive binding rules uh, that, that we can't ever live up to. Um, I think at its highest or at my highest understanding of it anyway the law as god's way and god's plan and god's desire for us is beautiful and is to be um, admired and to be sad when people don't live into it would that i could get to that that place more often yes i never think of god's law the word law just doesn't apply there. <laughs> yeah, when I read this and I read God's law, I think of um, Jesus' response to what's the most important law, you know, and love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your spirit, and love your neighbor as yourself. Like, that's the... That's the law that comes to my mind when I, when I think of God's law. Um, yeah, I think, you know, I, I think of Jesus. People were not attracted to Jesus because he was going around spouting the law, uh, responding to him because he was feeding them and healing them and nurturing them and showing us compassion so that's kind of where i <laughs> where i go with with my faith and you know when i try to work the law into it um it, it just gets awfully messy 
I mean, we see that in Hebrew scriptures just over and over and over again, that the poor Jewish nation just can't get it right. They can't follow all the laws. They can't, uh, they just can't do it. And um, that, that all just feels like yuck to me. But mm -hmm. you know, when, you, when you look at, you know, the, the what Jesus does with the law is points it in a slightly, well, in a different direction. It's mm -hmm. not just a rule book. It's a whole, uh, mm -hmm. you know, right. it's, it's a different way of treating people and being with people. And uh, so, so that's where I am. Yeah, yeah. Is that a theological term, yuck? Oh, yes, yes, it is. It's in, it's in Leviticus, I'm sure. <laughs> well, I wonder what the Jewish people felt about the law. Did they feel that that was? I, I don't know. It, was that caring in a certain way of? Well, you know, Paul spends his entire um, career as, as an apostle uh, decrying dependence upon the law to justify yourself and that, that you cannot make yourself um, perfect as God is perfect. You can only reach your connection and relationship with God through faith. So um, I, I think the law is, is kind of problematic, and yet at the same time, as Jennifer says, if we understand the law the way Jesus understood it, it's, it's about how we live in right relationship with God and with each other. That's why we can't put uh, copies of the Ten Commandments in courthouses. Oh no, that's different. That's a different thing. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if, like this, this quote from Psalms, um, where he says, "Let me go back up to it." My eyes shed streams of tears because your law is not kept, like. Um, if I think of it, of your law as in the law that Jesus um, explained to us, right, as the most important, then certainly I believe that many of us have shed tears because um, of people who are homeless or of refugees or, um, you know, hunger or fear, or abuse, like, that is shedding streams of tears because God's law is not kept because people are mm -hmm. not being loved and cared for like they need to be. Yes, in that context, I think I, I certainly can embrace that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I still don't like the word law. Yeah. For me, it for me, it's the the jurisdiction setting laws that you have to follow to act correctly in the place you are right and and jesus law that's something not a law it's 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 definitely something else thanks mike mm -hmm. a commandment what's that a commandment yeah <clears throat> I want to know why the grapes were rotten. It's a metaphor for the failure of the Jewish people to live up to God's expectations of them. Um, this part of Isaiah is written before um, they're carried into exile. And uh, so Isaiah is setting the stage for God's punishment of, of the people. Be curious to hear a conversation with Jews that are very 
uh, what is it, very traditional, um, reformed, um, whatever the. I'd be curious to hear what that conversation would be. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. You know that when you brought pointed out the fruit, Mike, it just reminded me of Dina's sermon yesterday about us being fruit inspectors and not judges. Yes. Um, we're not. We're just seeing what, just to see what the fruit that's there. Mm. Good point. And Isaiah, Isaiah is saying, you know, we we did all the right things. God is God, right? Did all the right things, and yet the fruit is rotten. Good point. Any other thoughts before we continue on with our prayers? Still love that image of Jesus as the mother hen gathering chicks under his wings. Mm -hmm. yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like that too. All right, let us continue with our prayers. Feel free to, those of you who are not my volunteers, to mute yourself so you can pray along with us out loud in your home. Splendor and majesty are yours, O oh God. You're exalted as head over all. Blessed are you, God of Israel, forever and ever. For yours is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. Everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. Riches and honor come from you, and you rule over all. In your hand are power and might. Yours it is to give power and strength to all. And now we give you thanks, our God, and praise your glorious name. For all things come from you, and of your own have we given you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Splendor and majesty are yours, O God. You are exalted as head over all. Our canticle is the third song of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open, Day or night, they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By <coughs> night, you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. To show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies. Free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. 
to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. To shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guard our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, help us so to hear them, to read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that through patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and forever hold fast the hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I invite your intercessions either silently or out loud. And thanksgivings. For Ed and Susan. For Fran and Skip. Lois and Bob. Phyllis and Jay. For our country as we move into the final days before the election. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the sun that always rises but never sets. You are the source of all life creating and sustaining every living thing. You are the source of all food, material, and spiritual nourishing, and spiritual, nourishing us in both body and soul. You are the light that dispels the clouds of error and doubt and goes before me every hour of the day, guiding my thoughts and my actions. May I walk in your light, be nourished by your food, be sustained by your mercy, and be warmed by your love. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.